This is Jonathan Kirsten with the Pittsburgh Technology Council and Tech Vibe Radio, bringing you the Tech Vibe Radio one mic stand right out of the Huntington Bank Virtual Studios. And I love doing these podcasts because we get to explore some of the, the areas of technology that don't always get a spotlight on them that need a cool spotlight. And one such story is the great work that CAI is doing with the Autism Society, with their Autism to Work program. And you know, lots of folks that are on that, that have the autism spectrum disorder. Um, I mean, these folks, some talented people that aren't being brought along for the ride and they're making sure they're being brought along for the ride. It's a great story. In fact, we've told the, the first parts of this actually a few years ago with Sherry Bursick, who's here with us today from CAI. We're gonna get an update because there's been so much impact. I know folks like Huntington who sponsor this show have been part of this as well too. So it's great to knit all parts of the community together. And we're also welcoming with us today, Jesse Tariski. He is the president and CEO of the Autism Society to talk about how they work together and really the great impact this is making. So guys, welcome both of you to the show today. So excited to talk about this very important topic. Hi, Jonathan, thanks for having us. It has been a few years since we last talked to you. So I have some yeah. updates to talk about. I'm so glad to see you again, Sherry. And I'm really excited to, to, to meet Jesse and learn more about his role and what, and what they're doing with this. Because at the Tech Council, we think this is such an important topic. And we, we've seen some of the impact to date. And it just makes us smile because, man, we just love seeing everybody brought into the tech fold here in the Pittsburgh area. So, Sherry, before we start quickly, what's your background with CAI? And give us the quick overrun of the Autism to Work program that you guys have. Sure. I work with CAI. I'm a client executive here in the Pittsburgh area. I work with a lot of clients on various needs. Mm -hmm. But we've had a real drive towards our Autism to Work program and our company has been around a long time. We were founded in 1981 um, as a business technology service company, but we've grown and grown over the years. Mm -hmm. And in 2013, we started up a really great autism to work program. It was the first of its kind. We partnered with a client in Delaware that said, hey, I have this idea. Are you willing to take this challenge with us? And, yeah. and then we started to learn more and more about um, individuals with ASD and their employment challenges, and it has grown and taken off all over the country. So That's our program awesome. matches individuals with ASD very specifically for roles that we have with clients. Mm -hmm. The client side, we work with them to make a very individualized um, approach and techniques for bringing in teams of people that they would need to do specific job functions. Absolutely. And so, Jesse, I'm so excited to get your input on what's going on because I know you've been crucial to kind of lining up, you know, folks to be part of this program and, and helping them and so forth. So, Jesse, what's your background and, and your passion behind leading, behind leading up everything going on with the Autism Society? Jonathan, thank you very much for inviting me. And it is an honor and a privilege to be here and to, and to um, talk about this extremely important program. Um, by way of background, I'm an attorney by trade. Um, my parents and 70 other parents started the Autism Society of America back in 1966. Wow, very cool. Yeah, it's, in 1967, they started the Pittsburgh chapter. So I'm the president of the Pittsburgh chapter of the Autism Society of America. And I took over that role uh, in 2016. We are the longest running autism advocacy organization in the United States. Um, we do a lot of information referral. That's our, our crucial thing. We, we field calls on a weekly basis for people. Uh, we also do training, um, a considerable amount of training to all different audiences. As a prior, as a former prosecutor, my passion is uh, the criminal justice system. So we have trained all magisterial district judges in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania twice now on autism uh, in juvenile justice and autism in the courtroom, effective methods of communication and de-escalation techniques. We also train first responders, police officers, probation officers, the medical profession, and uh, various other programs um, that, to try to help the uh, autism community. Fantastic. And now you're bringing tech into the fold, which I think is just so amazing. And to know that you guys have been doing this for as long as you have, I mean, that's just a great story. Once again, I think only in Pittsburgh, right? Something like that would happen. Right. So very, yeah. very cool. We met and became good friends right away. And uh, immediately we had this great <laughs> bond and collaboration. Jesse's able to help send us some really good referrals, either from parents or are interested in our program. 
and we've been working together well. He also helps us with a lot of our training. We do um, okay. an autism awareness training that they help us with. Very cool. And one thing I did not know is that CAI was started way back in 1981. So you guys are definitely one of the foundational tech companies here in the Pittsburgh area. I just love that. So let's just jump into the conversation. So maybe Sherry, tell us a little bit more about you know, how this program works and maybe give us some, some quick impact numbers, number of people that have kind of gone through this and maybe you're talking a little bit about some of the jobs that you're able to prepare these people for. Yeah, I have some really interesting numbers for you too. So over 85% of individuals with ASD are either unemployed or underemployed. And when you think about those numbers, that's, that's bad numbers. That's astounding. That's very, that's not, that's not good. <laughs> For how that's smart and how talented these people are, we, right. we do a better job of modifying our interview process. And really that's the foundation of our program. Okay. We eliminate the interview process. And instead we have what we call a job readiness training. And what we do is we have a it's almost like a class setting and everything's virtual right now. Of course. And we spent over 80 hours with individuals and they were observing various tasks, assignments, technology, like scenarios that they'll be working on. And they work not only individually, but in groups and they do presentations and it helps us observe the right people for the right roles. Oh, very cool. So you're actually getting to see what they're good at, where their strengths are. And then based on that, you can start aligning them to various types of positions that, you know, you can get them jobs for. We do, and as people come through our training, if cer certain ones aren't a right fit for the certain position we're looking for at that time, we hold people in our pipeline, and then when the next jobs comes up, that's how we find the exact right people for the jobs that we're doing. Very cool. We've put over 190 people through our program. What? That's a lot of, that's amazing, 190 people, wow. Yes, so our each year we're growing and growing, and it's very exciting. We have about 10 teams locally that I, I work on now. Well, that's amazing. So 190 folks getting skills and being plugged into the workforce that normally probably would not get that opportunity. And especially so many of our tech companies, they need talented people. They need folks that are with different mindsets that are solving problems in different ways. And now this is a new, a new talent pool for many of our companies to be, to be uh, drawn from. I find that really incredible. And Jesse and I talk about this all the time, but it's a matter of adjusting our way of thinking of how we interview. Normally, as an employer, you have 30 minutes, 60 minutes set aside where you want to interview somebody and you're looking them in the eye or back when we meet person, shake hands. Um, but those really aren't going to give you a good what someone with ASD can do. Oh, absolutely. And so maybe, maybe Jesse can weigh in on this because, I mean, it seems like autism has really come to the forefront, I think, maybe in the past decade where we realize that, as you said, there's this spectrum, right? There's people with all different types of abilities that are on this spectrum. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about that and how, like, often some of this talent's been overlooked because someone doesn't you know, kind of seem to have the right personality to fit into the workplace, but yet they got this brilliant mind that can solve really tough problems. Yes, uh that's actually at the heart of the, the Autism to Work program. CAI has tapped into this resource um, and it has led to very um, strong results in terms of the, the employers actually finding that their best workers tend to be the persons on the spectrum. Very interesting. Historically, yeah, historically, autism was just simply called autism. It was like it was like one thing. They didn't take into account levels and things like right. that. Right. Yeah. Everybody was lumped together. Autism comes from the word auto, meaning self. And mm -hmm. and the um, typical, if you want to say that, right. person on the, uh, on the spectrum was withdrawn. They didn't make eye contact. Mostly were nonverbal, things like that. They were very severely autistic, but there are also very high functioning persons on the spectrum. The autism, generally speaking, is a um, developmental disorder, which affects the person's ability later on in the developmental stages um, to pick up the necessary cues to interact socially, to communicate, and, and so on and so forth. Persons who are higher functioning used to be called uh, Asperger's. Right. And now the DSM-5, which is the uh, diagnostic um, Bible, for all the, the various disorders, changed it to autism spectrum disorder. And so you have literally persons that fall anywhere on that spectrum. Uh, and the persons that uh, CAI are focusing on are the higher functioning persons mm -hmm. who have um, 
generally a very uh, high ability to focus on tasks, very task oriented. They're, they are, um, they, they enjoy routines. They enjoy following uh, specific instructions, all of which are fantastic attributes for em, you know, an employee. Well, I think about coding and some of the tech jobs out there, they require extreme focus. I mean, these are things where like, in, 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 in a level of brilliance you don't often find in people and knowing that they have this combination of being able to sit there and do something that's kind of repetitive, but very important. I think yeah, if you can see where, where these alignments happen and all of a sudden like, wait, these are some great folks. Can you maybe tell me about what, what are some of the, the more common types of positions that you're able to kind of get these, these folks into? Our jobs are various and we have a lot of them now. So we okay. have everything from like assurance testers. We have release management positions. We have um, security access management. Okay. And uh, that's like setting up your user IDs, your roles. And those teams were some of our best success stories. They were operating from queue. And they never wanted to leave the queue with any <laughs> overperformed um, off spectrum peers. And we we have this funny saying between some of the managers we work with at client sites, was our bar not high enough? Did we not? Oh my goodness, are you serious? Wow, we that's that's impressive. When someone comes back and says that, that's that's saying something. <laughs> yeah. So we have all types of jobs and what's going to be exciting over the next few years is that we've started to branch out a little bit from the T space where we're the most comfortable, but we've started right. some uh, general data entry roles and we're also getting into some customer service client support roles. So it'll be very exciting as we keep expanding of all the opportunities that we can offer. Well, this really has grown. I remember Sherry, since last time we talked to you, I know we were just kind of getting into some, some a few verticals, but now to see that you're expanding, A, that means more opportunity for people to, to be given gainful employment. And I'm also assuming that when, you know, someone that's on the spectrum like this, you know, they, they, they get a job like this, it probably does absolute wonders for them. I mean, it, probably, it opens up their mind in new ways where they normally wouldn't have been. Maybe you have some, some ways you can tell us more about that as well, too. We do. Our stories um, of some of our team members are, are fantastic. We have people that relocated from other cities okay. to join us on different engagements. We have people that were able to get their own apartments for their first time, take public transportation. Right. The sense of individualism to be able to grow and step out of their comfort zone. I mean, it's it's been amazing. Jesse's helped us with some local events that they've held. Okay. Um, that we were able to get people together for and have like a real sense of community. Very, very cool. I'm just curious, Jesse, to learn more about like, like obviously, I mean, how you've been getting the word out and, and being this like pool to kind of find these people and link up with CAI to kind of share the candidates and, and make all this kind of magic happen. Well, it, it's actually harder than you might think. Um, a lot of the calls that we field involve um, younger persons that where uh, parents are finding out for the first time that their child oh, okay. was diagnosed and what do I do now? Where are right, the right, resources, right. what should I do? And that was completely lacking back in the 60s when my parents found out that my older brother was autistic. They didn't, huh. it was, back then it was one in 15,000 people right. were diagnosed with autism. Today it's one in 51. Wow, oh my so, goodness, how, that, that's, that's some crazy numbers right there. Yeah. And, and all the more reason why this program is so critical, uh, because even, even if, uh, as, as Sherry pointed out, the under uh, employment or, or unemployment is staggeringly high in, in this population. And now you have so many more folks that are on the spectrum. A program like this is absolutely critical, but we often will, will interact with, um, persons that we consider to be good candidates. And I, I immediately, I've, I've got uh, Sherry on speed dial here. On any time I have a, a person that I think would be a good candidate for them. You got the Sherry button, right? You hit it and boom. Hit the Sherry button. <laughs> We've also been talking with CAI about employing even folks that say aren't college educated, but still have skill sets. Definitely. It's, not, it's not limited to the high tech stuff, which is fantastic, Great. but it's also in, including uh, trying to get them employed in other uh, jobs where, mm -hmm. again, as you, John, I, Jonathan, I think you hinted, it, it helps their self-esteem because they are now feeling like they 
are being productive. Absolutely. I mean, I've talked with Tim Parks over at Life's Work many times about the work they do over there. And I see the impact when they bring folks in to do some tasks and to, and to be in, in a new environment, to be employed and do something productive. And people just change dramatically in only the most positive ways. And I know this is what's happening as you're working with these people and 190 of them so far. And I'm, I'm assuming that, that COVID has not slowed you guys down either, I'm assuming, right? You're, you're doing this stuff virtually and still connecting people, right? It hasn't slowed us down. I'm not going to lie. There was about two weeks of bumpiness where we had to scramble to get extra assets. Of course, <laughs> of course like all um, of us. <laughs> my mouse, like all of those things. But um, after we got through the the hardware side of it, we were we were doing fine. <laughs> Very cool. I'm almost wondering. I mean, does it almost allow you to reach more people just because you can do this virtually? Um, it allows more people to kind of participate due to any limitations of travel or so forth. You are right. I was just talking to one of our clients about that the other day. And in some ways, this really has opened up the country better for all of the people that we can interact with. We can really find the best people for the right roles and they can be anywhere. And we also have a team lead that helps in our process. We have a team lead assigned to each um, team that we have, and we can find the best candidates of those all over the country. And usually the team lead not only specializes in um, working with people with ASD, but they also specialize in that technology skill set that's needed at the client. Gotcha. Very cool. The one thing that's really important that I think would be really fun for us to discuss is, is integrating these folks into your workforce. And it may not be as tricky as you think it is. I know that you obviously you have to make certain accommodations, but it, it's not it's not this this huge like you know like like investment per se. Can you maybe talk about some of some, what are some of the basic things that an employer would have to do to make sure that if they bring someone with the spectrum you know onto their workforce, you know, to, to make them comfortable and, and be productive? Yes, I actually that is one of the main um, focuses of our training that we provide to CAI okay. uh, to some of their um, their customers is uh, giving them very basic accommodation uh, considerations that would be something you would consider even for a neurotypical person. Right. Uh, in fact, one of the highest compliments that we've received is from some of the managers afterwards saying, you know, these are some great ideas just for the employees we have already. Exactly, right? It's like, it's like let's just be more human to each other possibly, right? right? Yeah, it, could be, it could be as simple as a, a lot of persons on the spectrum find fluorescent lighting to be very irritating and often unbearable. Count so, me in on that one, that's for sure. Yeah, well, I, I actually am not crazy about the, the uh, fluorescent lights myself. And before we started this, I turned them on I normally, when I'm working here, I have half of the bank off. Right. But for some some persons, it's it's unbearable or it makes it very difficult for them to concentrate. So you have indirect lighting in their workspace. You know, that's not a, that hard. That's easy. Uh, some persons need a break midday, not necessarily a lunch break. Uh, I, I'm aware of one individual where the employer learned that it, if they're allowed to play a video game, a handheld video game for about a half hour midday, uh, it's off to the races in the afternoon and they're yep. fantastic. <laughs> it's just little things like that. And it's oftentimes very uh, individualized. Uh, our favorite phrase is when you meet one person with autism, you have met one person with autism. Right. Folks on the spectrum are as individualistic as the rest of us. Exactly. And I love hearing that. We, we often advise the best resource for accommodations is their family or caregivers. Okay. They know best what would be the things that would help that person maximize their potential. I'm never claiming to be a, an expert in autism, but I am an expert on my older brother. I know exactly what the best things are to maximize his productivity and, and make sure that his life is as uh, productive and enjoyable for him as, as I can. And I know what sets him off. And so that's something that you, you really need to tap the family members or caregivers to, to help the employer uh, find that perfect balance. Absolutely. I mean, this just makes, it warms my heart to know that, A, there's this resource here that, that that's actively connecting a segment of the population that's got crazy good skills with 
folks that need these skills. And then also providing this extra resource on top that as an employer, how do I make sure that I can integrate these people effectively, that I can make sure it's a great experience for all involved. And you have those tips and that experience as well too. So I think, I feel like there's like this whole kind of solution here between what, what CAI is doing with, with the Autism Society. And uh, so, I mean, I, I feel like we need to replicate this and get this out even bigger and better so everybody can kind of tap into this. So how, how is the future? Yeah, how, how do you continue to plan to keep growing this and how can we get people engaged and let them know that if they're interested in this, they can be a part of it. We need to get the word out to more employers right. that this is um, a, an untapped resource, that it is nothing to be afraid of, that it is to the contrary, going to end up being one of your best business decisions. The program that, that CAI developed is second to none, in my opinion, and the opinion of many persons in the autism field. Uh, they, have, they have studied this thing. They have worked it effectively. Their, their, their uh, interview process accommodates um, the, the persons and allows them to see what their true potential is. It's just a fantastic program. Absolutely. And so Sherry, tell us about the future with CAI and how you guys plan to keep kicking butt at this. We keep growing. Our, <laughs> our autism to work practice each, each, few, each year we are growing, we're adding new people to our onboarding, our recruiting, our training programs, our um, project managers. We, we keep growing each year and uh, by leaps and bounds. And that's great because each time we do, there's all the more jobs that we have available. Very cool. And what's the best way for someone to connect with you directly, Sherry, if people want to learn more and be a part of this? The best way to reach us, I'll point everyone to our website. It's totally. www.cai.io. And under our capability section, you'll see um, autism to work. And there's a few different boxes that pop up. If you're, if you know someone in your family that's interested in um, employment opportunities, there's a box there. The best way to set up is a meet and greet with us. We do virtual meet and greets, talk to you a little bit about our program. We even encourage parents if they want to them as well. And um, if you're an employer, our program really is, I can't say it enough, it's individualized for each company that we work with and each project that we engage in. So not each one, not everyone is the same. They're all very different and very focused on that environment. And there's also a section for employers to learn more about us and connect with us. Very cool. We're going to put those links in the notes of this podcast so people can click right on that and go right there and learn more immediately without having to worry about retyping anything that's for sure and i just kind of commend you guys so much for the awesome work that you're doing this is the type of work that is definitively making pittsburgh super proud that is for sure thanks for being part of the tech vibe radio one mic stand what a pleasure talking to you guys today thank you so much for having us if anybody Absolutely. wants to uh reach out to us as well just go to our website autism society of pittsburgh all of our contact information is there if they have if they have any other questions about autism or uh, potential trainings. Fantastic. Those links are going to be in the notes as well, too. So there is no reason not to reach out. You guys are the best. Once again, this is Jonathan Kirsting with the Pittsburgh Technology Council and Tech Vibe Radio, bringing you the Tech Vibe Radio one mic stand right from the Huntington Bank Virtual Studios.